So what percentage of women say well, they would go under the knife to get the perfect bikini body? 14%. Uh, forgive us, we've already started arguing about this already. Glad you've joined us after the break into this uh, last part of this morning's show. I'm joined by Britain's best-known psychotherapist, Dr Linda Papadopoulos, an expert in body image. And uh, we've got loads of calls already. Quick reminder for people that might not have picked up the phone, what kind of problems they can uh, get sorted. Matthew, anything to do with not feeling happy about how you look? So many of us put our, our lives on hold. You know, say, well, I won't go on the trip until I get the body I want, or I won't ask the guy out till I get the body I want. Maybe your partner's making you feel unhappy about the way you look. This is a real big one for women. Maybe... OK, okay so just out of interest, if, if, if you're asked, does my bum look big in this, do you answer truthfully, or do you tell them what you think they should hear. You preempt it before they ask. A woman is asking oh, that now, question. Oh, come on, Linda, come on. <laughs> that if she's asking the question, it's too late. Let's put it that way. It okay. means that she's, she's actually feeling quite, uh, quite conscious. So it means she's probably come out, walked around a few times, and is probably doing this for a while, and you've not kind of looked at her and said, honey, you look fabulous. Or, you know, or you, you those changes. I'm getting a get good point well made, that if we, if we were to tell our partners how much we love them and fancy them exactly. beforehand, then they, they wouldn't, wouldn't need be. to ask. OK. OK, I stand corrected. 0207 173 5555 is the number if you hate looking in the mirror or even worse, showing bits of yourself off in public. Uh, I want to go back to our little argument, which you haven't heard yet, which is we're trying to find out why, why this is. Why do we hate our bodies now? Uh, and you were just telling me about the family and, and how the family unit has changed. Well, yeah, I mean, I think what, what's happened is, you know, in years gone by, you were, you were valued for different things, for, you know, for being a really moral person or being a really intelligent person, for being an older person that gave something to the family. And so, old people would live in the same house as absolutely. us all. Absolutely, yeah. and your grandmother would have a say or your great aunt or your aunt, you know. And all of a sudden, we had a role beyond our, my, you know, boobs perking up and is my hair bouncing up whereas now it seems that after a certain stage and especially in a woman's life all her value in society goes out the window so she feels that in order to kind of be be visible in a way to, to kind of gain any sense of, of of integrity is that she has to kind of focus on just how she looks and if you turn on the TV and see is there any women out there who are on TV for, for what they know who are on TV for doing research or doing politics for the vast majority are on there because they look pretty so I mean I, I was telling I just went into schools to speak to young girls about body image and I would say so who do you idolize and it was all these girls that are in magazines off of reality TV shows or the singers and I'd say well how about a woman that's accomplished something tell me a female athlete and I swear Matthew they struggled to name anybody you ask the boys the same question they will name politicians they will name explorers they will name athletes why because so it's a peculiarly feminine Very issue much so. Very it is fascinating. It's very depressing, actually, when you start to scratch below the surface. So We're here, though, to try and do something about it, to try and change, reverse the tide, if you like, make you feel good about the way you are. Uh, and to help us, well, we're going to see if we can answer some of your calls. Amy, who's on the line first, please? Uh, we've got Louise on line one, um, and she says she's dreading summer. Why is that, Louise? Morning. Uh, hiya. Hi. Um, it's just, there's a lot of emphasis on bigger girls having problems with the weight and the way they look. Yeah. But I'm a size six and I'm almost completely flat chested and I can't wear the kind of summer tops that are out there at the moment because I feel so self-conscious. It's funny, isn't it? I'm thinking there's probably millions of women out there that would kill to be like you, Louise. And, uh, <laughs> and it's, we always want what we haven't got. Yeah. So skinny, flat-chested, size six, yeah. which is less than a size zero, isn't yeah. it? I think, or is that, yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. Louise, I mean, I think one of the, the things that I always try and tell women to remember is that, you know, beauty, we're all like flowers. Women, it's like a garden of flowers. And, you know, a carnation's not supposed to be a rose. A rose is not supposed to be a lily. So I think celebrate your own beauty. I think once you, you get your head around that, recognising that, you know, not... You know, some of us are dark, some of us are blonde, some of us are skinny, some of us are fat. And if we stop aspiring to be what we're not and actually celebrate what we have, it's like what Matthew's saying. I'm sure there's a bunch of girls, sit, you know, sitting there thinking, my breasts are way too big. I wish I could wear those little strappy tops that looked mm. like that. So start looking in the mirror and valuing what you have. How? How? If you look in the mirror and you look at all the, all the fashions and, and I, I think the flat-chested thing, I mean, I, I, I've been out with people who've flat-chested, been eaten up by it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, because what you do is you tend to focus on that thing and put everything that's negative in your life on that one thing and it almost becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy the second thing is that we've forgotten how to look in the mirror we're so kind of socialized into looking in the mirror and fixing what we don't like that's what so many sort of cosmetics companies depend on they're like well you don't like you know the dark circles well you use this kind of concealer or you don't like you know diet companies don't like the fat well you use this kind of diet and we've stopped being able to look in the mirror and say you know what I actually really like the shape of my legs or my knees or the color so of my practical eyes practical hints for Louise e what does she have to do every time you look in the mirror never leave without looking at least two things you like about yourself make a point of doing it you will be surprised what a difference it makes 
instead of idea. leaving the mirror and kind of thinking I'm, that's not quite right leave the mirror thinking those are the two things I like secondly if instead of looking in the magazines for people that don't look like you and saying I'm not like them look at those girls that celebrate their small boobies and there's tons of them out there I mean Cameron Diaz there's lots of you know flat chested girls that, that are gorgeous and beautiful Kate Moss Kate Moss absolutely tons look at look at aspiring them and thirdly and I think most importantly don't buy into this beauty myth that, that happiness and even confidence comes in one shape and size I in my private practice I swear to you Lise I see in many cases I see people with, with facial cancers that have a better self-esteem than some of the models that I see and some of, of the actresses that we it's all crazy, aspire to be like. It's all up here. All up there. That's some brilliant advice to you, Louise. Go out there, enjoy yourself, enjoy you. And we'll have another one, please, if we can, Amy. Uh, we've got Ailey online too, and she's just had a baby. Okay, Ailey, good morning. Good morning. Hi there. What's up with you then? Well, I've had a baby. He's 10 months old. He's actually my second. Right. Um, I'm just about to turn 30. Yeah. Um, my body, I, I, I would love to be Louise. <laughs> My <laughs> breasts are enormous now. Right. Um, I don't feel comfortable in any of the clothes that I used to wear, the style. I feel I've completely lost my identity. And I know that Linda will say that my identity doesn't come from the way I look. But I have always felt that my, because I'm, I'm not an unattractive person. But now I do feel so unattractive. And I, Ailey, I can imagine loads and loads of mums will share those thoughts. Uh, Linda, uh, what, what do you think? Absolutely. And you know what? I, I get you. I had a baby and I remember thinking, oh my God, I never used to have a problem with the way jeans fit. So I do get what it's like. I think you need to remember a couple of things. That number one, following this, you're going through <coughs> excuse me, a lot of changes, both in terms of, of your ho hormones, but also in terms of, of changing your identity anyway. That's you so are now a mother. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You know, you've gone from being sort of this, this, you know, this is your first baby, right? Second. 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 Oh, I'm sorry, you're second. Okay, so well, you've gone from kind of, you know, even being kind of that sort of the, the first baby, then the yummy mummy speech, now being kind of full-fledged, have my two kids, I'm a mummy. So that's going to change the way you look slightly. Secondly, probably the way that you're behaving is also going to reinforce that. So if you're not feeling sexy, I'm guessing you're probably having less sex. I'm guessing you're probably wearing less sexy clothes. So your husband's probably... No sex and no sexy clothes. No sex, right. no sex. So your husband's not probably feeling that he can validate you in that way. And don't forget, men often feel really anxious after their wife has a baby. They're like, can I touch you there? Am I being too aggressive? What do I need to do? So what's happening, sometimes the behaviors we engage in actually hinder us. So what I would say to you is start feeling sick. Don't wait for your body to catch up to you. You tell your body what to do. Your body will catch up. So start fooling around with your husband. Start beginning to find a way to, to, to feel good about yourself. And whether that means focusing on the one or two things that haven't changed or actually saying to yourself, you know what, I'm going to see my body as functional, not just aesthetic. And that's a really big one. These breasts were made for feeding babies. That's why they're big. And you know what, I'm going to enjoy it and, and, and value who I am. As enjoy an that change enjoy of identity. Change. As soon as you said change of identity, that was the thing that chimed with me and, and the women I know. And it, it is a change. It really is. Um, unfortunately, Ellie, we've got to leave it there. I can't get any more calls in, even if I tried. I say thank you for watching, thank you for ringing in, and thank you to this woman, Dr. Linda. Brilliant as usual. Thank See you again very soon. Uh, tomorrow, Casey Hopkins, who found fame on The Apprentice, is on the panel, and we're looking into the dark and stinky world of potty training with parenting expert Eileen Hayes. One discussion, Bandicles of Stinks. See you tomorrow at 9. Bye for now. Wow, that was real fun.